Hey YouTube, I'm Kenneth Ryan. I'm Lindsay Resop. And we're back with another exciting episode of Fan Fiction Friday. You may notice in the background that you can hear soup cooking noises. <laughs> That's because we are recording in the living room of an apartment where soup is being made, so... <laughs> There's that. Random fan <laughs> clattering. Um, we are picking up where we left off in Star Wars The New Galaxy, so we're picking up at chapter 38 plans. Ooh, only 20 chapters left after this. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and again, this fic is on fanfiction.net, so and it's by Cloud411. So yeah, we're almost two-thirds of the way done. And uh, here we go. I'll let you read the non-dialogue, because everyone's dead that you talk for. <laughs> Didn't I have a character that was alive still? Like, oh, Crystal, but like yeah. we're not there. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe she's there. Yeah, that was the only character. That really? Was. <laughs> Anyways, chapter 38. I'm gonna eat a crackle. Plans. Great. Oh, I left my sucker over there. Anyways, Salvador watched Rick's, watched Rick's speech to the public from across the street of a TV store. A <laughs> TV store. Do, oh. Do they actually have stores like that was just TV that you see in like movies, just like a bunch of TVs playing? Maybe in, in the in early windows. 2000s. <laughs> I guess. I don't think that's a thing anymore. Yeah. I guess in like Walmart. Because oh, that's usually just movies, so I don't know. Right, right. The store had several TVs in its window, and each was tuned to the speech. Oh. He had not expected the Guardians to release the existence of the Force-sensitive humans so soon. On top of that, his fight with Storm was broadcasted throughout the city. Where did someone get video of that fight? Uh, Vide. Vide, yeah. I'd like you to... <laughs> How did they get video of that? Yeah, that's a good question. How did they get video of that fight? That wasn't... I mean, wasn't there one already online, I guess, that they... Yeah, I think they saw some online. I straight Rick up don't the know. the other, a couple chapters ago. Like, Maybe. Rick was watching them and, like, fighting online or something, I don't know. Homie, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't impossible that someone was, because that was when they jumped off the building. Oh, yeah, I know. It was, it was super anime, and, and they, the like, used street, people yeah. as shields. I, yeah. I know, like, the fight. <laughs> so I guess there were people around to record it. I was thinking of, like, Joe's fight with him when yeah, he was, yeah. like, in an abandoned parking lot at a motel. But I'm like, oh, wait, this one was really public. Yeah, yeah, this one was like, they literally used people as human shields, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. It wasn't impossible that someone with a camera caught the whole thing. His only focus at the time was to kill Storm, and not to be killed by Storm. Okay. He flipped the hood of his sweatshirt up over his head to cloak his face. He's wearing a sweatshirt oh, and not like a cloak. Oh, he's in human clothes. <laughs> Got it. Now that the public knew of their existence, things would get more complicated and make it harder to move around without attracting, attracting attention. No one knows what your face looks like, do they? Yeah. I mean... I guess it's in the video, maybe. How high quality is this video that they're holding HD, it still enough? 4K <laughs> HD. It's 1080p. crisp. 1080p. 60 frames per second. It's crisp. There's like 2160p now or whatever. Oh god, I don't know. I saw like a video with that and I was like, what the heck is this? And I tried loading it and it did not load. <laughs> it did My not laptop load. can only handle up to 1080p. It's so. like it was there's like only one video I've ever seen with that. I've seen 4K. <laughs> yeah. Not a few. It was interesting. Okay, blah blah blah. Interestingly enough is the fact that the director failed to mention that there were two sides to the Force humans, Jedi and Sith. He's trying to classify them all under one name. Hostiles. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Salvador knew that sooner or later the normal humans would find out about them and had already calculated several strategies for when that day came. But this was too soon. Oh, sure. Okay, of course it is. If the normal humans all united against the four sensitive humans, then he would need both the Sith and the Jedi to help him fight them. Had he acted too soon on killing the Sith? Was he too driven by his own growth at that point to see the possible mistakes of his actions and the ramifications yes. it could have on his cause? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you could have led them. Right? But you decided to kill you them You decided, all. oh, I need to... Be the only one. Yeah. I'm the only... I am the alpha. Like, okay, well, now you're gonna die, so... Uh-huh. I am the soul. For I am the supreme. <laughs> Had he, Darth Salvador, why are you saying your name, doomed his entire plan to failure by acting on impulse rather than on a solid, secure plan of action? Yes, possibly. possibly. <laughs> I mean, like, yes, maybe. Those very thoughts made him sick to his stomach. This turn of events were indeed surprising. <laughs> okay. But not impossible to work around. The Guardians are trying to unite all the humans against the Jedi and the Sith, which means the Jedi and Sith have to unite in order to survive. But he's already killed half of the Sith Order, and Stacy should be close to killing the other half. <laughs> Maybe he could pay his or play his orders to Stacy to his own advantage. If he could get to the remaining outpost before she does, warn them, and help them fight her off, 
then he would prove himself loyal to them, and in connection, they would be loyal to him. Mm. Maybe. Salvador had, has no one been able to get out a message being like, hey, Salvador's killing us <laughs> hey, all. Hey, yeah, uh, this Salvador guy, not a good egg. <laughs> yeah. S- cell phones exist in this world, I think, so, like, it's pretty oh, easy yeah. to beep, boop, boop. How else are they getting video? <laughs> I you guess they had a camera, but they <laughs> called each other all the time when they were doing their weird dating thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, their weird dating thing. <laughs> Salvador had believed that with cunning and secrecy, he could make the Force-sensitive humans superior in every way by being making them ju- be just you and your sister, basically. I guess, yeah. And then they're superior, I guess, but whatever. But the change of events had shown him that he can no longer do that alone. He did indeed need an army, just as Mary had warned him he would. If he did decide to go back to the outpost and fight off Stacy and use her as a scapegoat, then he would have to momentarily abandon his mission to locate this crystal Jedi who has such a strong connection to the light side of the Force. He could either go... He's gonna end up in, like, a harem. Like, him and just a bunch of women who are good with the Force. That'd be funny, but I doubt it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. But maybe. Like... (laughs) Also, why would you just do this... Why would you do this to Stacy? Why you gotta do her that way? Because he's a bitch. (laughs) I mean, he was contemplating killing her, like, a couple chapters ago. Because, like, she makes me weak... It's like, no, your you bitch see- ass is weak by itself. Do you ever see, the, like, the screenshot of Always Sunny in Philadelphia where it's, like, Mac and it's the poster board of scientists. It's, like, Galileo, Galileo bitch. Like, just a bunch of... I, I only remember Galileo's name, but I think Newton's when on there. giant mailroom conspiracy thing? No, that's no. Charlie Day. <laughs> no, that's... Uh, then no, it, it's the know. one where it's, like, science is a bitch or something. Oh, I That's see. Sal- Salvador, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Said the Force. He could either go and stop Stacy and keep the Sith Order alive and under his command long enough to fight this war and win, or he could find Crystal, and if she's as strong in the Force as they say, he could rely completely on his ritual he had learned. Two options, both with a fair amount of advantages and disadvantages. Meanwhile, a long ways away in the White House, <laughs> the President of the United States sat behind his desk watching Rick's speech In 2008, this would be Barack Obama. He tapped his pen. I think it was a fake one, wasn't it? In this yeah, it is. Now. It is. He tapped his pen on his desk as he listened to Rick's words. A knock came from the door on the other side of the room. You can be the president. Maybe he's important. Is this the first time we're seeing the president? Yes. <laughs> yes, the president called. Mr. President. A business-dressed man greeting, greeted, stepping into the room. You told me to return in an hour after you had time to review the speech, he stated. Yes, I did, the president replied, leaning back in his chair. What action do you wish to take, the man said. Is the president really the only one making the decision here? <laughs> do they, it's a monarchy. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, they the, have, like, councils and... And, like, Congress kind of has to vote on Senate things. and, like, all sorts of people. <laughs> These false humans have clearly shown their intentions. Genocide of the normal humans, the president. This answered. is how people talk. Yeah, they've clearly shown their intentions. It's just genocide when there's only two of them that you know of. Jesus Christ. <laughs> two of them. These humans not only affect us, but the other countries around the world as well. Do you know that? <laughs> they most likely have these types of humans as we do. You know what could make this sentence sound more human? Like, more like a person saying it? Change the word human with people. Yeah. These people not only affect us, but other countries around the world as well. They most likely have these types of people as we do. It sounds so much more natural saying that than fucking these humans. humans. I do am a human. <laughs> yes. Jesus. I like skateboards. Oh, God. <laughs> I like skateboards. <laughs> oh, God. I, I am human ma- male. I like skateboards or whatever. I, that's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. <laughs> it's Kuga! <laughs> that's not okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to avoid going on. Completely like, different <laughs> video, but okay. Kuga! <laughs> <coughs> I want you to gather up all the leaders for an emergency United Nations summons to dis- no, discuss this matter, he explained. Yes, sir. The man replied, writing down something on a notepad. (laughs) What should our action be until the nations of the world can come up with something? I'm putting the United States on national emergency stage. What? (laughs) In a? In a state of national emergency. There you go. In a national emergency stage. (laughs) The president answered. Have the guardians step up efforts to arrest or eliminate these people before they can take any more innocent lives. These force humans want a war. 
We'll give them one, he added. They haven't declared war! Ooh. <laughs> the force humans, or whatever you feel like calling them, have not declared war! They ha they're not asking for a war. They're literally just fighting each other. And kind of using people as collateral, but... Yeah? But they're not declaring war. Everyone in this fic has the tendency to just jump to the wildest conclusions <laughs> and act on those wildest conclusions. Every single yeah. character has done that so yeah. far. So, like, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. It's very on brand for this author. Yeah, true. That was a lot of not dialogue in that chapter. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, next chapter. Chapter 39, beginning of the end. Stacy slashed her way through the scythes as it stood within the outpost, slashing off body parts and severing heads as she made her way to the middle of the building. She used the force to throw several scythe through the air against a wall. She lashed out with her lightsaber, slashing in a straight line, killing everyone in a row. <laughs> okay. Okay, all right. <clears throat> she released the force and the bodies flopped to the ground. She finally made her way to the middle to the middle room, which was a massive circular room with several doorways branching off from it. In the middle stood the outline of a muscular figure. She drew her lightsaber to impale the figure, but her lightsaber froze in the air and landed back in her outstretched hand. Confused as to why her opponent just gave her weapon back, she held it ready but did not advance. That's enough, a familiar voice said. <laughs> He's a muscular figure now. You have done well, but now it is time to stop. I'm only doing what you told me to! Stacy replied, lowering her lightsaber. <laughs> well, things have changed, Salvador replied, walking into the light of the room. Every Sith makes the gayest, most dramatic entrance. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. float down from the rafters with my arms crossed. I'm going to step out of the shadows every time. Every time. Oh, God. <laughs> The public is now aware of the presence of Force-sensitive humans and are most likely planning an offensive against us, he explained. You are surprised by their offense? She asked with a grin on her face. No, he shot back. I thought that with all the Sith dead, I could stick to the shadows and dominate the normal humans. But now things have changed. The Sith are no longer dispensable. I need them, he explained. An army for an army. So he's going with this plan, but not using her as a sta scapegoat. Oh, is she, well, we don't know. Maybe they're going to fight after this dialogue. I don't know. We'll see. But she already killed everyone besides him in this building. I know, so but... but, just, but he, oh, that's true. Like, he might tell her and have her attack them, and then just to gain their loyalty, but then have her not interact with the... Sith, have her go to the Jedi. Oh, that'd be, cool. that'd be smart. Is Salvador smart enough probably to think not. that through? I was going to say, probably not, but that's a good plan. That's a good plan. Stacy deactivated her lightsaber. What of the Jedi? Sooner or later, they will have to fight the normal humans as well, he answered. And how will you accomplish that? She asked, curious. The Jedi believe in peace too much to fight a war like this. I will not oh, maybe accomplish he, maybe this. He, is <laughs> he replied, taking a step forward. You will, he added. Dang, I'm too smart. Oh, to stop damn. I authors. didn't think this author was smart enough to think that I mean, through. You can't, don't insult the author. Like, <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. That was rude. But like the track record of this fic is not True. very smart decisions. True. So I'm a little shocked that this is actually a good plan. True. <laughs> so maybe it's not the author. Maybe they intended the characters to make constantly bad decisions. Yeah. That said, um, Stacy stood in confusion. Me? She repeated. Why me? In my few short days in the Jedi hideout, they believe you missing in action. They do not know that you have taken to the teachings of the dark side, he answered. We can use their lack of information to our advantage. They held you as their most prized Jedi who studied under one of the best Jedis in their order, he went on. Play your cards right, and use Joe's death to your advantage. Why do they only use advantage? an apostrophe S when it's not right? <laughs> One of the best Fan Jedi fictions. is in their order. <laughs> Joe's no apostrophe. <laughs> and you will be able to control the Jedi and get them to fight the Guardians. Why just the Guardians? The Jedi will not fight normal humans who are not Guardians. The Jedi see them, seem them <laughs> as innocent civilians who should not be drawn into this war. I will take care of those people when the time is right, he answered. Your new mission is to return to your Jedi friends and get them to launch either an offensive or defensive strike against the Guardians. I don't care how you do it. Just get it done, he ordered. What will you do? 
she asked, clipping her lightsaber back to her belt. I have my own mission I must complete before this war has its first major battle, he answered, turning his back to her. Just get your mission done, and quickly. The normal humans will not take long to react to the discovery of our kind. He walked off into the shadows of the outpost. Yes, master! She replied, watching his body fade to a figure, then an outline, then vanish. Salvador walked off into the darkness of the outpost to, to the control center. <clears throat> Stacy had killed nearly half the Sith in the compound, but she had missed a fair amount, something sa that Salvador would otherwise be very irritated about, but in this case, was pleased about. Well, I mean, you kind of interrupted her in the middle, so it's not, like, her fault, necessarily. Right? You can be the Sith. Oh, Salvador! <laughs> <laughs> this is screwed. Getting down on one knee. I hope this person doesn't become a, a recurring... It's just a random Sith, so hopefully this will be fine. Uh, I... Uh, getting on one knee. An intruder raids the outpost and is killing our Sith! I know. Voice all the time, but <laughs> I know. Salvador replied, I have killed the intruder and sent their body to oblivion to suffer for their treachery. Okay, so he's not pinning it on her and making he them added, fight against her. He just true. Like, ran a person. I killed them. Yay. A smile They're appeared gone. You don't on need a Sith's it. face. Good. How many Sith survive in this compound? Salvador asked, looking around. Twenty-five! <laughs> the Sith answered, standing up straight. Good. Salvador replied, Rally all the Sids from the outposts. From all outposts. He or from all outposts, he ordered. We all need to gather in one place. Why? The Sith asked, but quickly realized his lack of respect. <laughs> My lord! He added quickly. The normal humans have found out about our existence. It is all over the news, you Salvador answered. The many nations of the world will most likely form together to launch an offensive strike against our kind. Why? We will be ready with a retaliation I of mean, our own. I mean, they are, but why would that be your first thought? I don't know. Wow, people know about the Siths now. I mean, the Jedi, the Force sensitive people now, they're going to gather the nations and launch a war against us. It's like, that seems like overreacting. That seems like, like, worldwide genocide. Aside, but okay. <laughs> um, he explained. Uh, okay. Boop. I thought you were. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> the chain of command of the Sith has been tainted. The Sith said, "Darth Storm was in charge of everyone, but with his death, no one is left to take his place." <laughs> wow! His disciple standing in front of you. Interesting. I wonder if he's a valid option. I will, Salvador stated. I will take temporary command of the Sith until this war is over, he added. Once the war is over, we will no longer have a need for a chain of command. We will all be free. What? <laughs> hey, let's free. Let da, 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 da. But a Sith, you know? Yeah. Anyways. Make us Sith. The Sith did not hesitate in saluting the newly appointed leader of the new of the Sith Order. Hi, hail, hail. <laughs> that's, that's what I thought. I was like, this is a Nazi thing. Yes, Lord Salvador. Cool. End chapter. Well. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! I'm Evelyn, aren't I? What? Oh, Who? spoilers. The old lady? Yes, yeah. you are. Okay, you can, you can start <laughs> this, do this. Uh, dialogue. Chapter 40. Return. Stacy walked towards the entrance to the Jedi hideout. She had roughed up her clothes and hair to give the illusion that she had not been properly taken care of in days to add further truth to her story. Okay. All right. As she slowly walked in the Jedi hideout, stumbling a little as she walked, several Jedi ran forward and supported her. Just ran. You're alive! <laughs> One of, the, one of the yelled, racing forward and embracing Stacy in a tight, affectionate hug, pushing the two Jedi away from her. So it's just, it's just a random, unnamed Jedi, but she's apparently really close. Okay, well. His name is Jim. I read ahead a little. Fuck, what if he's per He might be important. You, you voice him from here on out. He might be important, you voice him. Uh, fine. She returned the hug just as affectionately, then pulled back slightly, uh... She whispered. At once, the Jedi replied, helping her along the hall towards Evelyn's room. It's kind of like my weird southern accent. It's I'm like, a little yeah. manlier. I, I got you. I got you. Because <laughs> so both of my characters are going to have that <laughs> accent. <laughs> I love it. 
Oh, I love it. Um, the Jedi are just a bunch of from the South people. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Did I say that? I don't know. The Jedi replied at once. The Jedi replied, helping her along the hall towards Evelyn's room. The Jedi knocked once before a voice replied. Oh, God. Oh, she was old and she was a woman. woman, Possibly British. I don't know. I don't know. Enter. That's That's not what it was, but. My name is Evelyn. (laughs) I don't know what she sounded like, so to be this one today. Enter. The The Jedi slowly pushed the door open. The room was a simple miniature cave setup, stone walls and floor with only a bed and a desk in it. At the sight of Stacy, Evelyn jumped to her feet and walked over to her. My dear, you're alive, she whispered. It's a miracle of the force. Oh god, that's just Joe. <laughs> I'll think of something. But Joe's dead, so it doesn't matter. Thank you, Jim! I thought she was talking to Evelyn. <laughs> Stacy said to the Jedi who helped her down the hall. A tear started to run down Jim's face as he started to leave the two of them alone. As he did. Wait! <laughs> Why is he just crying? Stacy called to him. He's alive. Stay here! Please! <coughs> Fuck. <coughs> oh, the coughs are coming, gang. Jim did as she requested and closed the door and stayed in the room. He helped her sit in a chair that was in front of the desk in the middle of the room. <laughs> the room. Where have you been? Oh, I must sound more womanly. I must sound more demure. Where have you been? Ev- oh, that just sounds like the gay guy. <laughs> Where have you been? There we go. I'll do that one. I'll make it breathy. It's very breathy, yes. Evelyn asked, sitting in the other on the other side of the desk. For the past week, I've been held captive. Stacy replied in a low voice. I tried to escape several times, but I just couldn't do it. I was too hungry, too thirsty, and too exhausted to be able to do (coughs) 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 anything about the matter, she explained. Uh, how do I say this? (laughs) Who held you? I was like, just try and sound uneducated. Who held you? Jim blurted out, unable to control himself. In short phrases, it's hard to get into the accent. I I, I know, it's really hard when you do weird voices for a little bit. He called himself Darth Salvador, she answered. It takes the first couple words to be kind of normal, and then you, yeah, get, yeah. Then you get into this thing. Oh, I totally get you. But when it's a three-word sen- sentence, it's like, well... Like, well, I tried. <laughs> Evelyn placed her hands under her chin and took a deep breath. Yes, this Darth Salvador seems to be causing quite a lot of problems lately, she said. One of our spies who has been working undercover in the Sith Order reported shortly his death... Shortly before his death, that the Salvador so, was starting to kill off all the Sith. So, the Jedi's spy in the Sith Order got them a message before being killed that he was killing off people. But, but didn't the, notice but that Stacy. No, but the part. Sith themselves didn't have time to get a message to the other Sith saying that the Salvador was killing off his Interesting. Interesting. I smell a little bit of bullshit, but all right. Interesting. She explained. Kill all the Sith? Jim repeated. But why? Isn't he one of them? His motives are not clear to anyone right now, Evelyn answered. We can only assume that for the time being, this is all part of some plan he is working on. What if he just killed them out of anger and rage like most sis do, Jim asked. What if this isn't part of some plan? Then he's a mindless <laughs> killing machine that has been released on the public, Evelyn answered. How did you escape? she asked Stacy. She answered, He let me go! Let you go? Evelyn repeated. Let me prepare. My throat cannot do a lot of Stacy all at once. Yeah. It's too bad that when she first appeared, we didn't realize that she, she was wasn't. I Evelyn. thought she died. Yeah. She had a fake death that I believed. She was just the bratty younger sister that was supposed to be there for like two chapters and then. Like a background character, but then no, it's like, but oh, now, now it's like, she's the one of the main two. God, they pulled a Game of Thrones when you see someone in an episode, and you're like, there's no way they're going to be important. And then, like, five seasons later, you're like, I can't believe this character is so important. <laughs> yeah. They were doing nothing when they were first introduced. Yeah, yeah. Yes! He said that he had gotten mm. all the, he needed from me, and that I could be more useful alive than dead! She replied. Suddenly, Evelyn's face lit up for a second. What did Salvador look like? She asked. Tall! At least two meters tall! Slim yet muscularly built! 
short jet black flowing hair and light uh, black eyes! How is his hair short and <coughs> yet flowing? <laughs> Mullet. I don't know. Trendy. <laughs> she explained. She's from Voltron. Evelyn sat frozen in her seat. It couldn't be. Could it? She reached in her desk and pulled out a picture and placed it on the table and slid it towards Stacy. Is that him? She asked. Yes! Stacy answered. He was just here until a day ago, Jim blurted out. A Sith was here and we couldn't even tell. But why was he here? What was he searching for? She asked more to herself than to the two others. And did he obtain it? I heard him talking to someone while I was captive, Stacy said after a long silence. He was talking about launching an offensive against the Jedi. He plans to kill us all very soon, she uh, added. Well, how does this get start getting them to start fighting against the Guardians? It doesn't. It's, it's, this is not working, Stacy. Yeah, Stacy, what are you doing? You should be like, hey, he's going to maybe try and join us. Maybe the true Jedi was the friends she made along the way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Joe, who died? <laughs> Woohoo! Woo Jim's got some lines. Oh, did you say your lines? Yeah, we're, we're right at the top. Oh. We have to be prepared then, Jim cut in. We have to launch an attack on them before they can launch one on us. It's not so easy. We are peacekeepers, not soldiers, Evelyn shot back. This is war, Jim shouted back. You saw the normal humans press conference yesterday. They're declaring war on all four sensitive humans, he shouted. We have to do something about the Sith and the Guardians. Oh, Jim's here <laughs> to do Stacy's plan. Weird. Got it. Yes. Figured it out. That's Jim's purpose. Stacy was smiling inwardly at Jim. She knew that he had a, had deep, affectionate feelings for her. He would be easy to control. Wait, she knew that he had deep, affectionate feelings for her. He would be easy to control. Oh, That's he's a got a boner for her. That's a sentence. It's not. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> he also had a lot of political influence around the Jedi, which means if she can maintain control over him... She'll be able to control the Jedi's way of thinking and eventually lead them down the path that Salvador wants. Do not misunderstand me, Evelyn replied. I understand where you are coming from, but if we start attacking the Guardians and the Sith, we will be no different than them, she explained. Please calm yourself, Jim. Jim took a deep breath, trying to calm himself and focus his mind. Stacy sat in the chair, watching the event she had spawned. She reached out with the dark side very faintly so Evelyn and everyone else would not detect it and poked at Jim's mind, feeling his feelings against feeding his feelings against Evelyn. <laughs> Evelyn stood up from her chair and walked over to Stacy. She placed a hand on her shoulder. For now, let's just rejoice that we have you back, safe and sound, she said with a smile on her face. I'm glad to be back, Madam Evelyn! Madam Stacy replied, returning the smile, but with a cynical sneer hidden within it. Ooh. Bum, 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 bum. Boom. Chapter 41. Jedi versus Guardians. <gasps> oh, nice. war. I'll start it, because yeah, you don't know if you'll talk. <laughs> Rick sat in his chair, drinking from a glass he was holding in his right hand. All had gone very well. So <laughs> there's no very in there. All had gone well so far. The normal humans were beginning to panic at the realization of freaks among them. Wow, humans. Uh, Great job. Good job, freaks humans. Freaks that mean to kill them all until only the freaks remained. There's like 12 of them. Right. Okay. <laughs> Maybe like 300. It's not a lot. All they needed was one more final push until they fell over the edge into complete war. But yeah, you guys have guns. These people right, these have, people have swords. Sabers, which are swords. So, like, you're fine. I mean, you can shoot them from now. far away. I want to kick cat now. And they can't really do much against it. Right. Well, I guess they can block blast around, but can they block bullets? That's a question. Yeah, maybe. There was anti-Jedi weapons and stuff yeah. that the Guardians True. had, so. True. They can just get rich off this stuff. Right? <laughs> stuff. That's the true plan. Selling the weapons to the Capitalism. <laughs> yeah, Strikes capitalism. again. Uh... Uh, complete war. After that, the extermination could truly begin. He just needed a public display of the force instead of humans killing people. You already have that. <laughs> which they is why used humans as shields. Yeah, which is why he is. I guess it's 
using them as shields and not like outright attacking them to just kill them. True. It was just in a fight against each other. Uh, public to do just that. Which is why he'd sent him out into the public to do just that. Who's him? Probably <laughs> that, that like, one, shadow that figure. shadow dude. Was that you or me? I that was you. Oh, yeah. He leaned back in his chair with a satisfied grin on his face. What did that voice sound like? Uh, I don't remember. He brought his glass up to take a drink when someone walked through the door to his room. I think this isn't the the, the Jedi, the, the Sith guy. I think this is uh, just a man. Just a man, sure. Like you. Okay. Sir, we've located a major Jedi hideout, a man said, entering the room. How? Rick shot back. Someone sent us a location anonymously, the man answered. Should we send some soldiers there just to make sure? <laughs> Rick considered it for a moment, then answered. Yes, send six units. Kill all the Jedi in the hideout. At the Jedi hideout. <laughs> oh, st- st- stunningly, the, the shocking scene change. Yeah. At the Jedi hideout, Stacy sat on her bed contemplating her next moves. She needed the Jedi to get involved in this war. Well, they're about to attack well, you, so... Well, at least that's what needed. Salvador needed. Why he needed them to be involved so heavily in this war, she did not know, and she did not waste time trying to figure well, it out. If you're... If not, if you can't figure it out, you're stupid. Hey, the humans are gonna try killing all four sensitive humans. Maybe we should get the Jedi to work for our cause to prevent them from killing all four sensitive humans. Gosh, I wonder why he wants them in the war. <laughs> I'm just a girl. <laughs> I can't possibly know anything. <laughs> That's me reading into this. Yeah. Are you reading this? Am I reading? Who's reading? Me, right? You know? Yeah, Rick. Yes. Yeah, so Rick me. was the last, so you were reading. <laughs> she fell backwards on her comfortable bed and closed her eyes. The Jedi had believed her story, which was mostly true, except she left out the parts where she had sworn loyalty to Salvador and who he really was. Mike Moore, her older brother. And the fact that you killed a shit ton of the Jedi, I mean, Sith, in the, at least, like, 50. Right? <laughs> She heard a knock at her door and walked over to answer it. She opened it and saw Jim standing on the other side of her doorway. Ow, ow! <laughs> Are we going to get a sex scene? I always picture him as someone older, but then now they're pushing this. I'm sorry to come so late, he said, but I just had to see you. <laughs> Stacy moved aside so Jim could walk into her room. She closed the door behind her and locked it. It's really late, Jim! She said. Be more productive. <coughs> <coughs> oh. Oh. Dang. Is there something I can help you with? He took a step forward and pulled her into a long kiss. Ah! Ah. Uh-uh. Has this been established as okay? You can't just kiss people, Jim. That's not okay. Consent is sexy, Jim. Consent is sexy. At first she was surprised by the sudden and unexpected move, but quickly closed her eyes and gave herself to the pleasure. Ugh. Okay. They held each other in a tight embrace, kissing heavily and moving slowly towards her bed. They were feet away from her bed before she started to take yeah, off his shirt to that he was wearing. Like two seconds after they. Oh my god! Is she gonna like stab him in the neck and be like, "Don't fucking try to fuck me, you asshole"? No, I that'd mean, be so that, cool. Like, the guardians. She threw it on the floor. She was gonna manipulate him, so this is a perfect way for this her to is. She's him, using so. sex to get what she wants, and let and let me tell you something. Men are fucking stupid <laughs> and will give sexy people almost anything they want if it means you're going to sleep with them. I don't speak for all men, but, like, this is a trope that I truly have witnessed play out in life. <laughs> like, s- not just straight men, gay men too. Just a pretty person who shows sexual interest will usually get what they want. Yeah. Anyways, um... She threw it on the floor, and he twisted around, and she fell to her bed on her back. He moved on top of her and continued kissing. Did He's you read <laughs> that sentence? Yeah, she took, his, he took his shirt off and threw it on the floor. I don't remember hearing you say it, but oh, okay. Oh, I remember it. Like before. <laughs> yeah. He slowly removed her shirt and threw it on the floor next to his. She rubbed her hands on his chest and started rubbing near his waist. What? He moved his hands. He's like massaging his side. Uh, like, oh, don't. Yeah. I'm tickling. She can't touch me like that. I know. <laughs> He moved his hands from her chest to her pants. Thirty minutes passed. Oh my god, there's such a tease. I want the nitty gritty. I like fan I mean, they fiction. They did the same thing in the beginning. With I know. Mike and I like when the fan fiction's like, oh, his like big hot dog right inside her clam. Oh my immortal! <laughs> he put his thingy in my 
thingy and they did you know what. <laughs> it's my favorite one. In my, uh, I'm not going to talk about that because that's yeah, a, that, okay. I can't talk about that technically. Never mind. 30 minutes passed and Stacy lay on the bed, her arm wrapped around Jim's chest. Even before she was taken by Salvador, she had developed feelings for Jim. Oh, had so, she? Okay. This was never established until chapter 40. Well, he wasn't mentioned until now. He was kind, strong, courageous, sweet, loving, and very handsome. <laughs> if she had not and been... a sweet southern boy. <laughs> if she had not been dragged into this war, if this war had not existed, she would have loved to get married to him and start a family with him. You're not ah! You're a Jedi. The, the female motivation to have a family... That's absolutely what all women want, because she is a girl, <laughs> and she wants babies. I mean, just because some women don't just mean that you can't have a character. Can't I know, one. I know. <laughs> I know what you mean. I personally find it boring, though, because yeah, that is, narrative has been boring. fed to us it for is, so it long. It is pretty boring as, like, a motivation. Like, since, like, the 30s and stuff. Like, that has just been the dominating narrative, so I'm tired of it. Yes, I acknowledge there are women who want to have families. By all means, live your life how you want. I just would prefer stories to tell me a different narrative. Yeah. That's all. That's why I'm complaining. And also, you're a Jedi. You can't have a yeah, family. Yeah, aren't they sworn to celibacy? So isn't yeah. this, like, bad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So this is, like, a, a Jedi sin. Yep. But who cares? Sex. Oh, Lord. But the times did not allow such thinking to become reality. They were in the middle of a war that was quickly getting more and more publicity and would soon be a you worldwide war. You haven't even entered war. the war yet. Maybe if they both survived the war, they could start a family together. Live together forever. He's gonna die in this, this chapter. This <laughs> would be more believable if Jim had been a constant. Or even mentioned earlier. But Jim showed up the chapter before, so I find it hard to believe that this relationship is as magnetic as you're saying it is. I wanted to see this from, like, chapter 12. I mean, once she was... She was just out with Joe for, like, the majority of the first time. I know. So they weren't in this compound. But they should have given us something. I this feel is, like I... This I've... is, like, the first time we've seen her in this compound since, like... I know. I feel I, uh, this just needs more backing because it doesn't feel yeah. real to me. It True. feels very just like oh, we wanted some sex scenes. Several loud bangs came from Stacy's door. Jim and Stacy both leapt out of bed and quickly got dressed. She walked over to the door and opened it. Evelyn was standing in the doorway, sweating and panting. We must leave, she told them. Why? Jim asked, stepping behind Stacy. The guardians have found us, Evelyn replied. They're here. <laughs> Jim shut back. Hey, Jim, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, what are you doing? Hmm. Yes, and they're killing all the Jedi. You two must leave at once, she told them. I will give you cover. Why must these two <clears throat> leave? As soon as they stepped out of the hallway, they could hear the sound of the Guardian's electric stabs and the Jedi's lightsabers clashing all around them. The noise was echoing off the walls, as were the screams of those Jedi who fell in combat to their opponents. And the screams of the Guardians, who probably are also falling to their opponents. Jim activated his purple lightsaber as Ooh, soon as they purple. entered the hall. Stacy activated her blue blade moments later. When'd she get a new lightsaber? Uh, she probably just got a bag. I don't know, man. I don't fucking know, I mean, they destroyed know, the other one. Oh, they did. The one that, like, Joe's, like, ghost was... <laughs> Joe's, like, don't do it, Stacy. Yeah. I mean, they, they might have given her one, I suppose, but they might have mentioned that. I don't they remember. They, yeah, they, they, they should have been like, it, here's a, another weapon for you. <laughs> this way, Evelyn said. There's a secret exit out of here that was created for an emergency such as this. She was leading them away from the noise. Halfway down a hall, Jim suddenly stopped running with them. Stacy stopped moments later, realizing he had stopped. What's wrong? She asked. Come on! Joe stood still. Jim stood still. The glow of his purple lightsaber casting a circle it, of light around him. I told you he was going to die. He's going to die. Oh, well, bye, Jim. Yeah. Oh, where were you? Gosh. All of your characters. None of them I make can't. it. I can't. He mumbled. I can't leave our fellow back there to... Fellow Jedi back there to die. Stacy ran forward and placed her hand on his clothed chest. Please! She pleaded. Come with us! If I left now, he began, I would never be able to forgive myself for abandoning my fellow Jedi. Evelyn was silent. But as long as we live, we can warn the rest of the Jedi about this, Stacy said. We can warn them so they can be prepared. Please come with us, she urged. Jim grabbed her hand and held it tightly in his. I'm sorry, he kissed her. 
I just can't. Again, this would be more sad if, like, Jim had been established earlier. Yeah, he's been here for a chapter and a half. Two chapters. He turned around and ran back towards the sound of battle. Jim! Stacy screamed, holding out her hand, wanting him to come back. Force, Force pull him! Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> Fuck you, stay here! <laughs> Just knock him out and take him with you. That'd be really funny. He might, he might be upset with that, and he might... Whatever. But would she rather have him angry with her or dead? I guess dead. I guess. The purple glow of his weapon faded as he turned around a corner. She was torn now. Part of her wanted him to stay, wanting him to be part of her life forever. But another part of her was happy that he had decided to sacrifice himself (laughs) so he could not be a hindrance to her. She turned around and continued down the hall with Evelyn leading the way. When they reached the secret Evelyn exit, Evelyn turned to Stacy. You first, she said, motioning to the opening in the wall. Stacy took a, took a step forward and, without warning, drove her blue blade through Evelyn's chest. Yes, Evelyn's dying too. Oh, I liked Evelyn. <laughs> Shock appeared over Evelyn's face as she was brought to her knees, the blue blade still in her. Stacy pulled the blade out and shut the weapon down. Why? Evelyn gasped as she tried to breathe. Stacy turned to the secret exit and stepped through it. Goodbye! She said, using the force to collapse the exit in front of her. You mean behind her? I mean, she's stepping up backwards, maybe. I don't know. Oh, maybe, but yeah. But no, she turns to the secret exit and steps out, and then goodbye and collapses the exit in front of her. Okay. So it should be behind her. Yeah. Once Stacy made it soup. made it to the other Jedi hideout and told them how mercilessly the Guardians had massacred the so Jedi powerful. and killed everyone, they would no longer be able to remain on the sidelines. The Jedi would have to get involved in the war. They would have to start fighting the Guardians. Then Salvador could do whatever he was planning to do. The war had begun. Jedi really versus Guardians. We can do another. Fancy. We can do another chapter. Yep, one more chapter. Then the soup will be cold enough. Yeah, then, then, then the... By the way, the soup is... Ooh, this looks thick with two C's. Yeah, the soup is done. Yay. Yay. <laughs> You're on. Great. Your character just died again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down to one again. God and and that one it. random assassin Jedi dude. Oh, yeah, with, like, who sounds like the little girl who I hope is really oh, gruff and manly. Oh, you remember what it sounds yeah, like? Yeah, because I was like, oh, I hope this character is really gruff and manly, and you gave it, like, the highest pitch voice. I'm excited. So, I asked you, like, a chapter ago if you remember. And, you and said, I didn't, no, but, but now did. I did. Now you do, so thank you. I had you. a brain blast. I'm glad. <laughs> brain blast. <laughs> brain blast. I had uh, actually... Okay, Jimmy Neutron. Um, unrelated to everything, I had my senior project, which is why content has kind of slowed down on the channel. In fact, it stopped. Sorry. Um, sorry, it's my fault. I was doing a senior project, which was a huge amount of work, and one of my professors was talking about, like, her experience in grad school, where she was, like, struggling really hard to do her work, and she's like, and then I kind of realized, like, the struggle is me learning. The struggle is the education. And I was like, wow, it all makes sense. No wonder my senior project was the worst struggle of my life. I had learned so much from it. Anyways, I wanted to talk about that. I don't know why. Brain blast. Oh, because I said I'm having a brain blast right now in the middle of class. Because that's the kind of person I am, so. Uh, okay. Um, am I reading or you? Yeah, you can. Because okay. who knows if you have a character. <laughs> yeah. Chapter 42. Fight back. Being part of the Jedi for eight years before she met Salvador, Stacy had gained the location of the second best Jedi hideout. Of course she would have. Okay. Don't you know more than one? I feel like she would. It took her several long days of traveling to finally get the building in sight. The building that the Jedi hid in was a fairly decent-sized building, four stories high and very wide. It resided in a middle-sized town with only about 2,500 people. That's and smaller a than our story hometown. Building. Yeah. That's like, okay. That's smaller than our hometown, and there's a four-story building that's very wide. This is a huge building. For a tiny town, yeah. That's it's like, like a school. That's like a school. <laughs> and no one's questioning, like, hey, what's this giant building for? Huh. I wonder what the people going in and out of that building do do with their lives yeah it's a small town everybody knows everything about everyone that's so true oh god that's so true (laughs) they they would they would question (laughs) they'd be really suspicious if they aren't told what they're doing in there i think this author grew up in a city yeah what kind of like elaborate lie would they have to tell (laughs) right oh we are a school i don't know well (laughs) we'll see what they come up with yeah 
a perfect place to live normal lives while keeping their secrets secret. Okay. She entered the town. I mean, it could be like random. Hey, this is a building. Someone's like, hey, can I apply oh. for a job at this, bu- uh, at this business? Nope. Sorry, not hiring. Unbelievable. Never. No hiring. <laughs> yeah, never hiring. You were going to say something. You said, oh. I just, no, I, I was like, oh, it's also in the center of town. Uh, but we hadn't gotten there yet. She I just entered the town ahead. and made her way to the center where the, bu- where the building stood. Because that's not sus. Yeah. Whatever. Hey, this giant building in the middle of town. Jesus of like 2,500 Christ. people. <laughs> anyway. Great. The town is like two miles wide. <laughs> There's like a giant building. <sighs> Whatever. She was Whatever. exhausted. She had walked days without anything to eat or drink. Only the force give her strength, and even that was starting to not have any effect on her. Couldn't she have force dashed and like gotten there way faster? Yeah, and also Zoom. couldn't you stop for food? Yeah, why don't you stop to eat? You're not in any hurry. She tried to walk normally. As to, why couldn't you just steal a car or something, too? Yeah, drive. Rent a car. <laughs> Rent a bicycle. Good Wait, Anything. But she would uh, not attract attention. She tried to walk normally as to not attract attention, but she would occasionally stumble at the lack of energy her body had. When she finally made it to the building, she entered, and someone who had recognized her quickly almost glided over. The women wrapped her arms around her. Why? They always use the plural. Yeah. Yeah. An accident. I'm, the English might not be their first language. I don't think it is. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, it's going to be me, apparently. What's wrong? The women asked. In private! Stacy replied through harsh breaths. Jedi business! She added. You're in a Jedi compound. The women led Stacy to an elevator that took them to the third level of the building. They walked down a hall until they reached the end where a door, st- a door stood in their way. The woman knocked one. The women knocked once, and a strong male voice replied, "Do you want to be both of these people? Because they're probably going to die." Mm, I suppose. Strong male voice. I keep using all of my random voices on, for all these random characters. Enter. Ooh. The two entered the room and closed the door behind them. The man who had called for them to enter was an elderly man in his late sixties, with a medium-sized beard that came to the middle of his neck. Okay. Okay. And a neatly trimmed mustache. He also had long white hair that dropped to a little above the middle of his back. Oh, Why? he's a character. Okay. Old man. You may call me old, old man. man. <laughs> he was wearing the traditional Jedi robes. My dear, what has happened? Yes. The old man asked, <laughs> noticing Stacy's condition. Yes. Sit, he said, pulling up a cushioned chair. Stacy sat down and caught her breath rather quickly. I mean, you were just walking. You don't need to catch your breath besides being tired. The chair was very comfortable. Her bottom sunk into it very nicely. <laughs> okay. Oh, and that's exactly what I think when I sit in a chair. I'm like, ooh, my ass is sinking in great. <laughs> yeah. Master Nowicki! <laughs> no she wiki. replied, something terrible has happened! Why does it make you think of the dude from Transformers with Wiki or whatever? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. If, are you talking about live action? I'm talking about Shia LaBeouf. And yeah, I don't. I don't know. Whatever his name is. Whitney. I never saw those. <laughs> really? You can't can't make fun of Megan Fox's white pants. In no, the desert I, can't. Running, I can't. I can't. I never saw them. I was not. I was never interested in the live action Transformers. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, what has happened, my child? That was got a weird voice. Or whatever. <laughs> he asked, sitting on the desk in front of her. The Guardians. She started. She said very slowly. Go on. Nowicki. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Nowicki insisted in a soft and comforting voice. They killed all the Jedi in the cave! She replied, closing her eyes and letting a tear fall out. Madam Evelyn told me to run and tell you what happened, that our friends should not die in vain! Wrong she vein. added. <laughs> she started to sob and cry a little when Nowicki put his hand on her shoulder. It's all right. Our friends are now one with the living force, he told her, and their deaths will not be in vain. I was the wrong vein again. I promise you that much. For the night is dark and full of terrors. By the way, that's a great religious phrase. I just want you to know that. Uh-huh. You can be. You are. You are the other woman. What should we do? The other women asked. We can't let this pass. We've ignored the Guardians' moves because they were only killing every now and then. Wow. Great plan. What? Yeah, that's dumb. But now they've moved up to her completely massacring us, she explained. I know, I know, 
Nobuki replied with a wave of her hand. It would seem that our time to get involved in this war has come. He said, closing his eyes for a moment, then opening them. Send a message to the other to all other Jedi outposts. They are to prepare for the battle, which will surely be coming very soon. That voice just got weirder. I love it, though. He ordered the women. <laughs> yes, sir. The woman replied, walking out of the room. What are we going to do, Master? Master. Stacy asked. The whole world now knows of our existence and have labeled us as freaks. They will all inevitably unite and fight us all as one. Fight us all as one, he explained. The Jedi do not have the strength to win the war on our own. We are outnumbered. And with the Guardian's technology consistently increasing, our gun is <laughs> I love that one. That one's even better. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it got weird. <laughs> oh, Lord. He added. I'm not good at accents of other countries. <laughs> it's going to sound really <laughs> racist. I, but, uh, whatever. You know, like. I don't mean to be. <laughs> it's, it's all in just, it's just fun voice acting. We're giving these characters some kind of personality. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I don't think it's. If it, if it's genuinely, I feel like I was just imitating an ASM artist, but I can't remember who or what they were doing at the time. <laughs> Fair. Then what should we do to keep up with them? She asked. If we're outnumbered, then we need more men. If we are outgunned, we need more power. But at the same time, we can't let ourselves become obsessed with gaining that power. She explained. A smile appeared over Nowiki's face. Very good, he complimented. I think it is time to put our differences aside. It's kind of Indian, but also not. You sound he said, standing like from his desk. you've never probably seen anything from Final Fantasy XII. You sound like the people from Rosaria speak. <laughs> That's how they speak. Fine. So, like, Dalmascans speak very American. Uh-huh. Arcadians are British. And Rosarians sound very, like... Indian. Indian Spanish type. Fun. Yeah, that's what it's making me think of. Huh. What do you mean? She asked, having a feeling what his answer would be. The Sith and the Jedi must work together in the Force if, if in the Force is to survive this war, he answered. An alliance. Join with the Sith? She asked, sounding taken aback. <laughs> but we have been at war with them ever since the beginning of the Force! She Why? added. Why? Wasn't this supposed to be balance? <coughs> God, people. Well, that, see, he's going to say, he's going to explain. That's where you are wrong, Nuiki replied. We've only disagreed with their way of using the Force and the powers they obtain through their actions. In this lifetime, we've not yet waged war with the Sith. Just have occasional battles every now and then. The Sith are the ones who've declared war on us. <laughs> this voice is getting weird, different again. I love it, though. We never made such a move. At least not yet, he explained. And right now, even though the Sith may not admit it, we need each other to live through this war. I see! She replied. I understand that the Sith had, has had a change in leadership, he stated, after a few seconds of silence. You were held captive by them. Do you know who is ca- currently running the Sith? He asked. I believe it's the one who kept me captive, she replied. Who would that be? He asked. I have yet to receive the report. That's because there was none. Because, because it's been you like killed hour. everyone. Yeah. yeah. I believe that Darth Salvador is now the full leader of the Sith, she answered. Ooh. Noki's face was blank for about two seconds before his facial expressions came back into focus. Then I will need to speak with Dark Sal- with this Dark Salvador. Hopefully, he sees things the same way I do. That we must unite in order to that we must unite in order to defeat our enemies this time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just <laughs> evolution. It, uh, it's so good. Stacy sat in the chair, listening to Noki's words. She could not help but think: Is this what Salvador wanted to happen? Is this why he wanted her to leak the location of the Jedi hideout to the Guardians in order to force the Jedi to ally, the, ally themselves with the Sith? If so, then why? Wow, that's a oh, thing that we didn't a... know before. Okay. She leaked the location to them. Okay. She had a feeling that Salvador's plan would soon unfold further, and when it did, she would be able to read it clearly. Nice yeah, ending. Yeah, that is, that's keep, actually a really ending good... ending on nice cliffhangers. We're, we're ending on, like, the best cliffhangers all the time. Oh, cool. Well... Thanks, everyone. Lots happened. Lots happened. We, she had a love interest. That love interest got Died. killed. I'm a little <laughs> sad about Evelyn. I liked her. She seemed yeah. nice. Yeah. This was a lot of Stacy chapters. Yeah. We didn't see... See name my character. What's her face? Crystal. Crystal. Crystal's been missing for a while. Yeah. She went off to go find Dark Salvador and nothing has happened. And yeah. And then that plot line kind of has been dropped right now. Yeah. Um. New characters. 
I think Nowicki's going to be important for a bit, so I'm pretty excited. He's going to die in like oh, of course. a couple chapters. Of course he is, but like for now he's important. Um, cool. Anywho. We're going to go eat soup now. We're going to eat soup now, graciously prepared for us by Abby, who, thank you, Abby, you're now sitting across from us, so I'm going to say that and put it in the end credits of this. Ha ha ha. And thank you guys for tuning in. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like. If you have a fic suggestion for us, please leave it in the comments down below. We'll probably read it on the show unless it's like super disgusting. Do that. And until next time, stay awesome, read more smut. It's soup time. Bye. ASMR.